we're joining alongside thousands of churches across the country, thinking about what it means to, to be people of kindness. And over the next five weeks, we're going to look at kindness, compassion, humility, respect, and love. The idea is that if we could take seriously these five things and our commitment to, to follow the way of Jesus, not only would the world around us change, but we would be claiming the power of the kingdom of God, the thing we pray for when we gather and worship. Thy kingdom come. Do on to others. Interesting enough, as we think about these things, often we struggle to claim them because we, we look at each other and we see these differences. The reality is, though, within the human body, I'm no scientist or doctor, but, but in my research I've come across, within the human body, we share 99.9% .9 of the same DNA. It's identical between one and the other. There's somewhere between 20,000 and 25,000 genetics within our body pointing to DNA. And so the person next to you and the person behind you and the Baptist across the alley, we share similarities at a 99.9% .9 rate within us. That's to say, the differences among us, 0.01%. And yet the world we live in, the, 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 the culture we're navigating today, we highlight that 0.01% as if it's everything. But in the reality, you and I, we're the same. 99.9% the same. And so what we do in the life we live in and the way in which we've been conditioned is we size each other up and we, we put people in categories. And, and sometimes we do this at a very uh, conscious level, but often it's a subconscious level. And some of the categories we put people in, we, we put people in categories based on age and race and religion and social economic status and education. And when we gather in a, a place with, with people, we naturally sort of gravitate to people we share similarities with, people of the same age and the race and, and that sort of thing, creating some divisions or some barriers. There's other ways we size people up in a less obvious way, things like personality type, type A, type B, introvert, extrovert cultural backgrounds or, or family cultural backgrounds that, that we bring in and we encounter someone who's different, we put them into categories. Political beliefs, we got the, the liberals and the conservatives and, and people in between and we divide over these sort of issues. Uh, lifestyle choices, we have the, the tree-hugging vegans and the gun-carrying Christians and we, we split over those kinds of things, right? Right? We divide over value systems, over, over Christian and, and, and non-Christian, or, or something other than, than Christian. And even within the Christian community, we've created some divisions. And, and, and you follow Jesus this way, but, but I follow Jesus this way, and my way must be right. Divisions. And things like marital status, who's married or, or single or divorced or widowed. And, and we put people into these groups, and we forget the practice of Jesus. Do on to others. Or to say it differently, be kind or choose kindness. What I'm suggesting is kindness is a choice. Interesting thing about kindness, the, the root word that makes kindness is the same root word that makes family. That is, we are kin. We all come from the same ancestry. We share 99.9% .9 of our DNA. We are family. We are kin. And to choose kindness is to see each other as family. Not worldly family because that's a broken part of our culture. But the family that God desires. We are one and we are to love each other unconditionally. And that includes the crazy uncle. Amen? To choose kindness is to see each other as kin. One theologian says it like this, the primary concern of God is the well-being of the family, the family made up of the whole human race. Question is, what is kindness? What does it mean to choose kindness? Kindness is not a thing we do, it's a way we live. 
to take seriously this call of kindness. We cannot choose to be kind in this moment, on this day, and in all er other areas of our lives reject the practice of kindness. If that's the way we're navigating life, we've missed the point. To choose kindness, it's, it's who we are. It's a part of our DNA. It's the way we interact with people all the time, everywhere. And yet I also want to suggest it doesn't have to be nearly as complicated as we make it. I want to brag on Anna James this morning. You recognize Anna James. She grew up in this church. And a few years ago, her senior year of college, she started to feel this call to go into ministry. And so as she was thinking about going into ministry, she found a program where she's now uh, taking classes at Austin Theological Seminary, working to get a master's degree in youth ministry, and she's employed at a, a small Presbyterian church outside of Houston. When she went to interview at this Presbyterian church, she immediately noticed the, the church shared its property with a park owned by the city. And since being there for about a year now, what she saw is on Sunday mornings, her church parking lot would often be empty, but the playground full of, of kids and, and families. And so she began to think, how can we connect the church with these families? How can we show kindness to the families on Sunday mornings who, who play in, in the park? And so she wrote a grant with her local presbytery and, and got this money, and she started this new ministry called Pops in the Park. Pops in the Park, every uh, Sunday morning, this, this church, Anna and a small group of people, they go to the park an hour before the start of worship, and they hand out popped themes items, soda pops and push pops and, and popsicles, and they give these snacks to these families and the kids free of charge. And with every snack, they extend an invitation, we would love for you to join us in worship. To create a bridge of relationship. Kindness. Anna, when describing this ministry, she says this, it's extending hands and hearts to connect with families. Kindness can be as simple as handing a, a soda pop to a, to a family in the park. Which leads me to wonder this morning, what would happen if we turned simple acts of sharing a snack into bridges of kindness that leads to deeper connection? deeper connection. In the Hebrew Bible, we find this word he said uh, 250 times, and, and that's the Old Testament, 250 times this, this word has said is, is there, and yet it's a, a complicated word. We often translate it into kindness, but, but like the Greek word love, it has multiple meanings and complexity. So when we read has said in the Old Testament, it certainly can mean kindness, but it also means compassion and mercy and steadfast love. So to choose kindness, to do unto others, it's to commit to a, a practice of compassion, to show mercy, and, and to be people of steadfast love. Hesed is at the core, is a core element of God's character. And just as God has shown us kindness and compassion and mercy and steadfast love, we are called to extend the same to others. To do this work of kindness to all of God's people. Here's a photo of my wife and I on our wedding day. And I share this because as I'm thinking about this day, after we got engaged and, and right after getting married, all of a sudden we began to receive all of this unsolicited advice about marriage. Much of which was helpful. There were a few people who, who said some things and I thought, there's no way I'm following your instructions. But there's one piece of advice that sticks out to me. It was from a minister that I had worked for years earlier. After he learned that, that I got engaged, he sent me an email uh, giving me a word of uh, congratulations. But then he said, in marriage, it's easy to always love your person. It's not so easy to always like your person. So work on liking your partner. I'll give you an example. Um, I love my wife, and I love her unconditionally. But sometimes I struggle to like her around the holidays because the in-laws come. And when the in-laws come, my wife, she gets a little, you know, and it's hard to like her. She would say the same is true about this time of the year. It's hard to, to like me when I'm watching the Cowboys. Amen. 
but we always love each other. I say that because as I think about this, this practice of kindness and, and to do on to others and how difficult it is, we should work not just to love unconditionally, but to like each other and to like the other, especially someone who you see is different than you. Our faith calls us in difficult moments to choose kindness. And what I want to suggest is when someone votes differently than you, you can choose kindness. When you experience a relationship with someone who has a religious viewpoint different than you, you can choose kindness. When engaging in a conversation with someone over hot topic issues like abortion or immigration or gun control, you can choose kindness. When sitting next to someone who roots for anybody other than TCU, you can choose kindness. Randy? Or we would be good to remember this next week when we vote on a shared name. When worshiping next to someone who votes on a name different than your preference, you can choose kindness. Do on to other. That is the instruction of Jesus. And a part of that means to choose kindness. So we do this work because it's what our faith calls us to do. But we can also do this work for selfish motivations. And here's what I mean by this. And it's not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, one researcher who's dedicated her entire life to studying the practice of kindness, this is what she says. People practicing kindness are happier. They have less stresses, better relationships, more successful in business, and their marriages are happier, and they live longer. When you choose to practice kindness, your life is better. And when your life is better, the world around you is better. So choose kindness because it's what our faith calls us to do. But be selfish and choose kindness because your life will be better for it. So this morning, I want to give you some practical steps on how we can choose kindness. I'm going to suggest four things and maybe encourage you to take a few notes or, or take a picture of what's on the screen as you see it. The first thing I want to suggest when choosing kindness, seek to understand before being understood. It's the old adage, God gave you uh, two ears and one mouth for a reason. I I'm thinking of a story this morning I heard in a, a sermon a few months ago from a preacher, this preacher was telling a story of a, a small country church and this small country church had this little girl early elementary sitting on the front pew and she was fully engaged in the the service the the preaching was was meaningful to her the, the prayers and the the music it was powerful and so at the end of the the service right when the preacher was getting ready to give the benediction the, the, the this girl she felt called or compelled to to stand up and share what she heard from God that day and so she she stood up and said sorry I need to interrupt you I need to share with you what what God has said to me God has said to me that that we as a church we need a new chandelier in the sanctuary and the church they were ecstatic they started clapping and saying amen you go and they were so excited but then there was that one angry old man every church has one Tim Archer I'm kidding the church is clapping, and, and that angry old man, he stood up and said, I've had enough. This is silly. We're wasting our time. We don't need a new chandelier, and I'll give you three reasons why. One, no one can spell it. Two, no one can play it. And three, what we really need in our sanctuary are new lights. Think about it. How often in our life are we arguing and debating about the same thing? But we haven't slowed down long enough to understand. Seek to understand before being understood. The second thing we should consider when practicing kindness, small acts matter. I think I've shared this before. I was in high school, 16 years old. I'm working at a go-kart track, which is the, a dream job for a 16-year-old boy. But on this particular day, 
I was just miserable. I was done with the day. You ever been done with a day? I was done. I was ready to go home and call it quits. You could see it all over my face. And yet, I remember that evening working at this go-kart, being miserable with the day. And I looked up and I noticed someone smiling at me. Their smile was contagious. And when I, I caught a glimpse at this person's smile, it brought joy from within. So much so that 20 years later, I remember this experience from being in high school. What I'm suggesting is small acts have the power to bring about kindness in big ways. So to choose kindness is to be committed to small acts. Number three, I want to encourage you to volunteer, particularly volunteer with people different than you. People you wouldn't normally spend time with. What I've learned in ministry, whether I'm swinging a hammer in Mexico building a house or or spending time in the alley handing out canned goods to our food pantry clients. When I'm volunteering with someone, even someone different than me, when we're serving to make the world a better place for someone, all of a sudden our differences, the 0.01%, they don't matter. And we're able to, to choose kindness together. So volunteer. And the last thing I want to suggest we consider when choosing kindness, speak kindly, whether on social media, in a text message, or an email. When having conversations with people, body language and tone matters. Let me suggest you can be in a church meeting and you can uh, share your opinion without raising your voice. Amen? You can have conversations with friends who, who vote differently than you without getting angry with one another. I'm thinking about a couple of years ago, I was in a, a room full of, of people, mostly strangers, and we're having conversations, and there was one man in particular, he was just angry, and everything he said was negative, and no one wanted to be around him, he had this energy about him, and I was just over him after about 30 seconds. Well, through our conversations, um, I shared with the group that I was a minister, and after sharing that I was a minister, th- this, this angry man, he quickly said, Oh, I'm a Christian too, and I go to such and such church. I thought to myself, based on the previous 30 minutes, there's no way I would have guessed you're a Christian. My, my point is, when people find out that you're a Christian, they shouldn't be surprised. To, to choose kindness is to speak kindly, to, to live life in such a way that folks won't be surprised when they learn that you're following Jesus. These four steps, seek to understand before being understood. Small acts matter. Volunteer and speak kindly. Thinking about Anna James and this mission project that she and her church has started, they applied for a grant through their local presbytery, and I was intrigued about that, so I did some research, and I went to their presbytery website, and I learned their their mission statement and their vision statement. Here's a part of their mission statement. Helping the body of Christ foster faith, hope, love, and witness. A part of their vision statement, we seek to connect the body of Christ by facilitating relationships. As I read these two statements, I'm drawn to this idea of relationship. And what I would argue today, to choose kindness is to foster relationship in such a way that we see each other as kin, as family. And we look past the 0.01% and we claim the 99.9%. That we are so much alike. But out of these mission and vision statements, they, they've summarized it with a single tagline. And I love this tagline. Receive love, share love, repeat. What does it mean to choose kindness? Receive the love freely given to all of us by God revealed through the person of Jesus. Share the love in the same way that Jesus gave his whole self for us. And repeat. Especially in the most difficult moments of life. To choose kindness is to receive love, to share love, and to repeat. One theologian says it like this, Do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelms the world. So when you choose kindness, and when you choose kindness... And when the person behind you chooses kindness, and when you choose kindness, and when the Baptists across the street choose kindness, and everybody who claims to follow Jesus choose kindness, all of a sudden, 
we are overwhelming the world with kindness. The kingdom of God. May it be so. Amen.